even our enemies, we just want to say thank you. And then, God, we pray that you bless this world and bless this country when we are having all of this sickness, coronavirus, is everywhere where people are sick and taking lives away. And we pray that you just touch the families in a mighty special way. Be with us. And we have faith. And we know, God, that you have power to do all things. So just have your way in the name of Jesus. And as we go into the Bible study tonight, we pray that you just be with us and we pray that you just bless us and give us the understanding of that holy and divine word that we'll be doers of your word and not just spirits of your word only. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen and thank you, God. Several weeks ago, before this coronavirus come up, we talked one day and we talked about that one of these days, what if you wanted to come to church but could not come? But sometimes I, I don't know how you feel, but I just sit back and I think that we ought to be praising God right now because he blessed us to see another, another day. And as I was thinking, I never thought that I would see this happen when schools are closing, business are closing, restaurants are closing, people have a stay six feet away from each other, jobs are closing people not having a job to work. So I come to tell us today that we all need prayer. In our Bible study one night, we talked about fasting and prayer. So what we're going to do tonight, today, is Christian fasting. fasting. What does the Bible say? Now, when we think about Prayer and fasting, a definition. Prayer and fasting is defined as voluntarily going without food in order to focus on prayer and fellowship with God. And may I add this is that we all need to have a fellowship with God. Prayer and fasting often go hand in hand, but this is not always the case. You can pray without fasting. You can fast without prayer. It is when these two activities are combined and dedicated to God's glory that they reach their full effectiveness. Having a dedicated time of prayer and fasting is not a way of manipulating God into doing what you desire. Rather, it is simply forcing yourself to focus and rely on God for the strength, provision, and wisdom you need. Christian fasting, Christian, Christian fasting, what does the Bible say? The answer to that scriptures does not command Christians to fast. God does not require or demand it of Christians. At the same time, the Bible presents fasting as something that is good, profitable, and beneficial. The book of Acts, when we read it, it records believers fasting before they make any important decisions. If you look over in Acts the 13th and the 7th verse, and also Acts the 14th and the 23rd verse, Acts 13 and 2, it said, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And the third verse said, and then they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them. They sent them away. And if you look at Acts the 14th and the 23rd verse, it said, and when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commanded them to the Lord on whom they believed. Fasting and prayer often linked together. Over in Luke, the Gospel of Luke, the 7th chapter and the 31st verse, 37th verse, 
It said, and she was a widow of about four scores and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. You see, too often the focus of fasting is on the lack of food. Instead, the purpose of fasting should be to take your eyes off of the things of this world and to focus completely on God. Fasting is a way to demonstrate to God and to ourselves that we are serious about our relationship with God. Fasting helps us to gain a new perspective and a renewed reliance upon God. Although fasting in the scripture is almost always a fasting from food, there are other ways to fast. Now, if you turn your Bibles uh, to 1 Corinthians 7 and verses 1 through 5, anything given up temporarily in order to focus all of our attention on God can be considered a fast. Now, if you look at that 1 Corinthians 7, 1 through 5, it says, Now, concerning the things where uh, ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man to not to touch the woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have his own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power over her body, but the husband. And likewise, also the husband has no power over his body, his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourself to fasting and praying, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your continuous. Fasting should be limited to a set time, especially when fasting from food. Extended periods of time without eating can be harmful to the body. Fasting, church, is not intended to punish the flesh, but to redirect attention to God. Fasting should not be considered a guiding method. Either. The purpose of a biblical fast is not to lose weight, but rather to gain deeper fellowship with God. Let me help us today. You see, all of us need to gain a deeper fellowship with God. Anyone can fast, but some may not be able to fast from fruit. In other words, for example, people with diabetes, diabetic. Uh, they cannot fast because they have to eat at certain times. Now, I want to tell us today, don't let Satan and the things of this world pull any of us away from God. And I want to say that clearly today, we ought to realize and we ought to know that if anything that we need to do, right now we need to be closer to God. Everyone can temporarily Give up something in order to draw closer to God. By taking our eyes off of things of this world, we can more successfully turn our attention to Christ. Fasting is not a way to get God to do what we want Him to do. Fasting changes us, not God. Fasting is not a way to appear more spiritual than others. Fasting is to be done in a spirit of humility and a joyful attitude. Now, if you will, turn your Bibles to Matthew 6 and 16 through 18. It declares, Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites, of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto 
men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. And that 17 verse it says, but thou when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face. That thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So a question might be, what is the connection between prayer and fasting? Let me give you the answer to that. Although the connection between prayer and fasting is not specifically explained in the scriptures, a common thread connecting the two seems to run through all the instances of prayer and fasting recorded in the Bible. Now, in the Old Testament, it appears that fasting with prayer had to do with a sense of need and dependency and uh, of hopeless helplessness in the face of an actual or uh, anticipated disaster. So when we read our Bible, we find prayer and fasting are combined in the Old Testament in the times of mourning, repentance, and of deep spiritual need. The first chapter of Nehemiah describes Nehemiah praying and fasting because of his deep distress over the news that Jerusalem had been desolated. His many days of prayer was characterized by tears, fasting, confession on behalf of his people, and pleas to find God for mercy. So intense we are pouring of his concern that it's almost inconceivable he could take a break in the middle of such a prayer to eat and drink. The devastation that befell Jerusalem also prompted Daniel to adopt a similar posture. If you look at Daniel 9 and 3, Daniel said that, So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition, in fasting and in sackcloth and ashes. Like Nehemiah, Daniel fasted and prayed that God would have mercy upon the people saying, we have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. And that's in verse 5. So in several instances, in the Old Testament, fasting is linked with intercessory prayer. David prayed and fasted over his sick child. That's over Samuel uh, 12 and verses 16. Weeping before the Lord in earnest intercession. Clearly, church, fasting and petition are closely linked. There are instances of prayer and fasting in the New Testament, but they are not connected with repentance or confession. The prophet, the prophetess Anna, never left the temple. But she worshiped night and day, fasting and prayer. That's over in Luke 2 and 37. So at the age, her prayer and fasting were part of her service to the Lord in his temple, and she awaited the promised Savior of Israel. Also in the New Testament, the church at Antioch was fasting in connection with their worship when the Holy Spirit spoke to them, notice what it said. It said, when the Holy Spirit spoke to them about commissioning Saul and Barnabas to the Lord's work. So at that point, they prayed and fasted, placed their hands on the two men and sent them out. So we see here in these examples that prayer and fasting are components of worshiping the Lord and seeking his favor. Nowhere, however, is there any indication that the Lord is more likely to answer prayers if they are accompanied by fasting. Rather, fasting along with prayer seems to indicate the sincerity of the people praying and the critical nature of the 
the situation in which they find themselves in. The more critical the situation, the more appropriate the fasting and prayer. Watch this here now. In Mark 9, Jesus cast a demon from a boy. The disciples had been unable to perform this exorcism, although they had previously been given authority over unclean spirits. That's in Mark 6 and 7. And when you look at Mark 6 and 7, it said, And he called unto him the twelve, and he began to send them forth by two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits. Later, the disciples asked Jesus why they failed in their attempts to free the boy from the demon. And Jesus answered to them in the ninth chapter of Mark, the 29th verse, he said, this kind come only by prayer. Matthew account asks the phrase in fasting. Matthew 17, 21, he said, now be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. In this particular case, the demon was exceptionally hateful and he was stubborn. And we also find out, if we keep reading that in the 21st verse of Mark 9, it said, and he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. In the 27th verse, now this is over in Mark 9, uh, uh, in that 27th verse, and it said, and oftentimes it had cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him, but if thou canst do anything, have compassion on him and help him. Now, Jesus seems to be saying that a determined foe must be met with a equally determined faith. In other words, prayer is a ready weapon to the spiritual battle. Let me, let me prove this to you. Turn your Bible to Ephesians 6 and 18 and you'll find it there. It said, pray, praying always with all power and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance uh, and supplication for all saints and fasting helps to focus prayer and give it resolve. The theology of fasting is a theology of priorities in which believers are given the opportunity to express, notice that word, to express themselves in, un, in an undivided and intensive devotion to the Lord and to the concerns of spiritual life. This devotion would be expressed by abstaining for a short while from such normal and good things of, as food and drink so as they as to enjoy a time at of uninterrupted communion, communion with the Father. Prayer and fasting should not be a burden or a duty, but rather a celebration of God's goodness and mercy to his children. So, a question. What are the different types of fasting? The answer to that, usually, fasting is the abstaining from food for a certain period of time. There are different types of fasting in the Bible. However, and not all of them involve food. Many people in the Bible fasted, including Moses, David, Daniel, in the Old Testament, and Anna, Paul, and Jesus Christ in the New Testament. Many important figures in Christian history attested to fasting value as they as do many Christians.
Israel of David, the nation of Israel, and the city of Nineveh. Fasting is also related to Pharaoh's prayer, as in the examples of King Jehoshaphat and Queen Esther. Now, we need to know that biblically fasting comes from an humble heart seeking God. Remember that. Biblical fasting comes from an humble heart seeking God. Look at Isaiah. If you look at Isaiah 58, 3 through 7, in Isaiah 58, the people complained when God did not recognize their religious action. But God responded that their fasting had been only half-hearted. Hypocritical fasting resulted in contention, quarreling, and excluding the possibility of a genuine prayer to God. Fasting consists of more than just an outward ritual and a mock repentance. It involved repentance over sin and consequent humility, disconnecting from sin and the press of others, and feeding the hunger and the act humanely towards those in need. The regular fast is done by abstaining from all food, both solid and liquid except for waters. This is the type of fast that Judas King Jehoshaphat called for when his country was confronted with invasion. And that's in 2 Chronicles 20 and 3. The Lord defeated their enemies, and the men of Judah blessed the Lord in 2 Chronicles 20 and 24 through 27. After the Babylonian captivity, the people returned to Jerusalem, and they prayed, and they fasted, asking God for his protection on their journey. And you see, the Lord also, the Lord Jesus, fasted during his 40 days in the wilderness being tempted by Satan. That's over in the Gospel of Luke, the fourth chapter, to the second verse. When Jesus was hungry, Satan tempted him to turn the stones into bread, to which Jesus replied, man shall not live by bread alone. Another type of biblical fasting is the partial fast. The prophet Daniel he spent three weeks fasting from certain foods. In Daniel the 10th, the prophet said, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. I ate no choice food, no meat or wine, touched my lips, and I used no lotion at all until the three weeks were over. Notice this, that Daniel's fast to express his grief on this occasion only omitted choice food and also involved relinquishing the use of oils and lotion for refreshment. Today, many Christians are alive, uh, 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 follow this example and abstain from certain foods or activities for a short time, looking to the Lord for their comfort and strength. Also mentioned in the Bible is the absolute fast, uh, the full fast, where no food or water is consumed. In Esther 4.16, when Esther discovered the plan for all of the Jews to be killed in Parisia, she, she and her, her, her fellow Jews uh, fasted from food and water for three days before she entered the king's court to ask for his mercy. Another example of an absolute fast is found in the story of Saul's conversion. The murderous Saul, you remember him, he encountered Jesus in his glory on the road to Damascus. And if you look at the ninth verse, of uh, Acts 9 and 9 verse, it said, for three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. Immediately following that time of blindness and fasting, Saul dedicated his life to preaching Jesus Christ. <coughs> In the verse of Esther and Saul, the absolute
absolute fast only lasted three days. However, Moses and Elijah took part in miracles 40 days absolute fast. When Moses met God from the mountaintop to receive the tablet of stone, he ate no bread and drank no water. And after Elijah defeated the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, the man Queen Jezebel, Elijah fled for his life and spent 40 days of fasting in the wilderness. All of us need to fast. And let me go, go back and look at this here. In 1 Corinthians 7 and 5, Paul says that a married couple can mutually agree to abstain from sex for a short period of time in order to devote themselves to prayer, but then they are to come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. So as I give it in the close this year, fasting, whether it's regular, partial, absolute, or sexual, is seeking after God's heart, all other blessings and benefits being secondary to God himself. This is what sets apart biblical fasting from other religious and cultural practice around the world. That's why the Bible tells us, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all of these other things will be added unto thee. As I close, may God bless you, and remember uh, that we always pray with our season. Hebrews 13 and 5, it said, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have, for he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And my brothers and sisters, as I close this, with all of these that's going on in the world today, we need to make sure that we have a closer relationship with God our Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And thank you, God.